Hey everyone, welcome to the Sun Valley Daily Devotional. My name is Paul, and I'm super glad to be joining with you today. We're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 30 and 31. And for context, there's been this miraculous thing that's happened. Paul and Silas are in a jail for sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And there was an earthquake that opened all the doors, and the jailer's about to kill himself, thinking all the, the prisoners have escaped. But they haven't. They actually cry out, and they, and they say this. It says, but Paul cried out with a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. There's so much happening here. Literally, their reaction to this man about to kill himself and telling him, no, no, don't worry, we're still here. That, that example of the grace and the mercy of, and love of Jesus literally pulls him, calls him into this question of what must I do to have what you have? And so they share a really simple, simple idea. Believe that Jesus is Lord. Now, I, I want to focus a little bit on the word believe here because in this passage, and sometimes we see in scripture that belief and faith are intermixed, and what do those really mean? And so we're actually going to jump to Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6, and here's what it says. It says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Here we're seeing two essential aspects of faith. First, that we believe that he exists, that what we're doing is acknowledging that God is creator, that he is, he is sovereign, that he is powerful and king over all. And that he's Savior, that he has saved us from our sin. He saved us from ourselves. Even while we were his enemy, no matter where we've been, what we've done, God loves us and he has saved us from that end. But also he rewards those who seek him. And here's an amazing quote uh, from an author that I love. Uh, his name is Paul David Tripp. And he says this about, about what it means to seek him. He says, faith is never just a matter of what you do with your mind. It is always a transaction of a willing and submissive heart that alters the way you approach every area of your life. What he is saying is that the heart of faith really does believe that God's ways are best and are right. So here comes the kicker. Do we believe? Do, do you believe? Like you say you believe. Let me put it, let me put it this way. Do we live like we believe what we say we believe? What, what, what am I saying? What I'm saying is that if we believe that God's way is right and best, is your life truly depicting that you believe that? And if you're wondering or not sure, which I mean many of us are and consistently we are, I have a challenge for you. Maybe, maybe ask your, your spouse. Ask a coworker, a friend, maybe even ask your children. Who will they say you believe? Would they say that you are living the way that Jesus lived? With joy, with humility, with a heart to serve others, to love God with a passion and live on a purpose for others. It's my prayer today that our lives just be a beautiful, beautiful portrait of what it means to believe in God. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, today we invite you in to help us live every day in belief, in a way that shows we believe in you, that we love you, that those around us see Jesus in the way that we're living saying, God, that your ways are best. Your ways are right. Through the Spirit, convict us each and every time that we're not. Lord, let us be parented by your grace, so in turn, we may give that to others. And through our lives, show our belief in you. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Have a great day.